Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and I'll be taking a look at this Corsair Gaming Scimitar RGB gaming mouse. And this is designed for MOBA and MMO gamers. However, you'll want to see what separates this from the rest. Here's what you get in addition to the mouse. I will be showing you what's up, so there's no need for this quick start guide. Chuck! And this is lay warranty guide. This thingamabob here is a magical tool for the thumb pad that the Corsair fairies have included for you. It's got a good weight too, now that's quality. You get 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet of braided cable, thanks for the velcro tie. And here's the USB 2.0 connector. On to the mouse. The scimitar measures 119.4 millimeters by 77 millimeters by 48.8 millimeters. And it weighs 147 grams. The body of the mouse has a smooth rubberized finish to it with a grippy fourth finger rest area. It's got a unique spread of triangles that gives very good resistance. I'd say this is a palm grip mouse. I have small hands FYI. I enjoy the subtle gaming yellow side piece they've added, it's just enough flash. As for the buttons, you get 17 programmable buttons. 12 are on the thumb panel, and there's your standard left and right clicks. Mouse wheel button with textured rubber finish, and these two glossy ones below it. Let's head back to the thumb panel as the coolest feature is right here. I love WoW myself, so I don't like living without a thumb panel. The amazing aspect about this particular group of keys is that they slide. Depending on your comfort preference, you have 8 millimeters of movement with 8 locking positions. Let's take a closer look at the keys themselves. You get a gentle concave slope, and two rows of the keys have a darker color to them, as well as a textured feel, so you'll know what keys you're on just by touch. There are also mechanical switches, so you avoid the mushy feel and can feel the actuation distinctly. I personally prefer the key group to be closer to the far right, as it's the easiest to reach the first six keys. And I pretty much never touch the last two rows. I use a keypad to cast the remainder of my spells. However, it's nice to have the option to slide the keys forward in case I ever find myself needing to use those last set of keys. Now you might be wondering how to lock and unlock the thumb panel. Just flip over the mouse and you will find the key slider lock. Use the lock tool and twist it counterclockwise to unlock the thumb panel, and clockwise to lock it back up again. Also on the bottom are four PTFE glide pads. And here's the 12,000 dpi zero acceleration optical sensor. This mouse should be good for FPS gamers too. This mouse has four zone RGB lighting for those who prefer something extra. You can see it on the logo, mouse wheel, the thumb panel, and the front of the mouse. Before we head into the Q software, be sure to update the firmware. Once again, I'm back in the Corsair Utility Engine software. Rest assured, there's onboard memory for the Scimitar mouse. We are currently in the Profiles tab. You can choose to create a new profile, and there's the option to link a program to it. And if you like reminders, you can always toggle the OSD settings. There's the option to import or export existing profiles as well. Right now, we're on the default profile. Click on this icon to edit the profile, delete it, or save profile to device memory. I just don't like the name default, so I will call this one JTL. And there you have it, it's changed. Now, let's create a profile for WoW. I really need to finish Warlords of Drainer. To access different profiles, simply click this arrow for the drag down menu. Below profile is the mode section. Modes are essentially profiles within profiles, so you really only need to save one main profile to your device. Once again, we have a default name, so let's change that. Click on this icon and then edit mode. Let's name this M1 for now. Click the plus icon to add more modes. Let's call this one M2. The arrow icon will allow you to import a mode. Now let's move on to assignments. This is where you will assign functions to the mouse buttons. Let's click the arrow next to number one. You can set a couple of your mouse keys to mode or profile selection switching. I would probably use the back row keys. There's the option to assign an existing action, but we're going to create a new one. Let's name this macro one. Oh, nice, you can enable double macros in here. Other treats include action repeat, delay, and you can even sync lighting effects. Hit the record button when you're ready, type out your desired commands, and click stop when you're done. You should be able to see the new macro under the actions tab now. Looks like macro one has been assigned to the one key on the thumb panel. Let's go into create new action again, so I can show you some of the other features. Under text, you can create memos, for example. You can assign a keystroke, shortcut, DPI level, and even a timer. I can imagine this being useful in raids. There's also mouse control and media control. It might be easier to change volume via mouse click at times. It's time for lighting control. Right now, we're on zone one, and you can easily switch between the other zones just by clicking to them. The rainbow effect is currently set, and you can change the speed of the effect. Yay! I feel like medium is a bit too fast, so I'm going to try slow. Yep, I like that better. You can also see the changes on the mouse as you are applying them. If you prefer a more uniform look to your lighting, you can apply an effect to all zones. Next up, we have solid color. Click on the color square to access the color palette. 
If you don't care so much, you can pick from the basic colors. I find the constant shift of colors distracting at times, so solid colors are great for me. You can also change the shade of that color, and of course, there's the rainbow color map. You get 16.8 million colors to work with. Click anywhere on the RGB palette to select the color you want, and click OK when you're done. Let's go for color shift now. You can either choose random, where the lighting will shift between multiple colors, or alternating, and you get to pick the two colors that it shifts to and from. For this effect, I prefer the speed to be on fast. Last but not least is color pulse. I would just pick random because I like seeing the colors pulse differently each time. And of course, I prefer the effect to be on fast mode. You can always choose to alternate the colors, especially if you're a competitive gamer and you want your team colors to speak for you. The last tab under the profile section is performance and DPI. First up, we have the DPI settings. You can assign different colors to the DPI levels. On default, the scimitar buttons beneath the mouse wheel are DPI switches. And when you select a different DPI, the lighting color next to the thumb panel keys will change. Slide the circle across the bar to increase or decrease the DPI for that setting. Or you can change the DPI by typing it out or using the arrow keys. Click in this area to enable XY DPI. Widescreen mode may require higher DPI on the Y axis. There's also the option to change up the pointer speed, precision, enable angle snapping, and toggle lift height. This is where you can see the list of available actions, lighting, and finally, settings. Under device and settings, you can choose to disable the device lighting, change up the polling rate, and update firmware. In program, you can change up the general settings, OSD settings, and add media players. Finally, there's support in case you have any questions. I like that I can see my system info in this section too. That concludes this look at the Q software. That wraps it up for this look at the Corsair Gaming Scimitar RGB Gaming Mouse. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media, Joanne Tech Lover Facebook, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Also, be sure to follow me on my other YouTube channels, JTL Lifestyle, JTL Cuteness Overload, and JTL Love Life and Advice. I guess all that's left to say is bye!